right, let me get this going. So when we're working on our grid, the goal is really to transfer something in one square to another square. So what I like to do is I look at each square and I find the midpoints, and I'm just kind of marking them, of each square. And when I am drawing my lines, I try to figure out where do they fall on the square. So for example, this first line that I'm drawing here kind of falls right in the middle. And then I try to figure out where it ends. Ooh, lucky me, this one ends right in a corner. So I'm really looking at where in the squares my shapes and outlines land. So same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna start a line and it kind of ends just below the middle. So you're really looking at where along the side of the square your lines end. Okay, I have a line that starts there, and it comes here. This one's just before the middle. That one's up, okay. And you're trying to transfer what you see in one square to the next. Now that was easy, because I just did it with lines, but you're gonna have to do it with outlines of an animal. And I'm gonna make your lives really difficult. You're gonna be kind of mad at me. You're gonna be a little miserable. And thankfully I've done this with my other class and they all were like, ooh, at the end, because they felt like it came out really good. So when you are gridding out your animal, you should have some kind of thick paper that you have a pencil grid on. And you should have some kind of image of an animal that also has a grid on it. And if you're a little nervous or if you're doing this on your own at home, just double check, make sure your resource image, in our case, the animal, in my case, the giraffe, has the same number of boxes as your paper because that will really help you out. So for a lot of us, it's nine by 12, but I know some of you are doing squares or other shapes. So just make sure your resource has the same number of squares as your final paper and mine does. Before we get started, I'm gonna have you do the stressful thing today. And here's the stressful thing. You're gonna grid upside down and you are going to hide everything except what you are gridding. I don't mind if you just do one row, if you really are like a naturalist, you can just literally do one square at a time. I know it's gonna be stressful this way, but it forces you to really look at your animal and not even think of it as an animal. So I go from one individual square, there's nothing in that one. Next one, nothing. And I'm always periodically counting. And this one, there is something. I know, cause I looked at my creature that I'm doing a giraffe, but you don't have to do every little hair. I'm really lightly drawing the outline. So look at each square, looking at this square, it kind of starts just above the halfway point, goes not quite to the corner. I even marked the edges. And then you really lightly draw and pencil your outline. So if you're doing something like a tiger, you're outlining the stripes. You're not actually going to color them in. You can simplify some things, but keep in mind we are going to be painting. So you want to outline your big colors as well. So if you're painting something, it would be a lot easier if you outlined a pattern or a color. And you just slowly go through and you do one square at a time. That's really the gist of it. Go ahead. Can I cut my thick paper to make it the same as this? Yes, so if it's not, there's scissors over on our materials table there. You can totally grab them and cut it out to grid. Hey, I just 